Hi, welcome to the Archaeoastronomy database. This video is a follow-up to a previous video about a summer solstice alignment at Newgrange. Now this is in the exact opposite direction from the winter solstice alignment at Newgrange that we're all familiar with in the actual monument itself with the light of the rising sun at winter solstice shining through the roof box down the passage and into the chamber. This alignment is a view from the top of Mound B towards Newgrange on the horizon. Mound B, also known as the Dogda's Mound, is located down by the River Boyne lower than Newgrange up on the ridge. So Newgrange stands out really well against the horizon. And the view you're seeing here is a horizon that's been imported into Stellarium that's very highly detailed, and thanks to David Hoyle of standingstones.org for this horizon. It's a great resource if you have never been to standingstones.org, so I'll put a link down in the description to that. And there will also be a link to the previous video that this video builds on in the description and also linked up in the top corner and at the end of the video. So again, we're looking at Newgrange from this view on top of the Dogda's Mound. And the summer solstice sun will be setting along this trajectory that you can see and coming down into the mound. Now, this year, 2022, Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland captured a beautiful photo of the sun setting into the mound of Newgrange from this vicinity and with his kind permission I'll share it here and you can see the sun setting right into the top of the mound now coming back to Stellarium we have a simulated view with this imported horizon, and I'll zoom in just a little bit, and we'll speed the sun up a little here, and you can see this similar view to what you saw in the previous photo. Okay, now the sun has set completely behind the mound. Now as I looked at this, I wanted to know how the situation would be different in the Neolithic. And there was a little discussion on this on the Archaeoastronomy Database Facebook page. And it turns out that in the Neolithic, Let's go to about 3000 BC. And we will adjust to the summer solstice of that date. Of course, it doesn't correspond to June 21st anymore because of how the calendar works. For this time period, you need to adjust to about July 17th. And you can see now that as the sun sets, it's going to skim along the right-hand edge of the mound and actually peek out just past the edge of the mound here. And the edge of the mound is defined very distinctly by the curbstones that kind of retain the material that builds up the mound. And so it seems that this is very intentional to have the summer solstice sun just peek out past the edge of the curbstones bounding that edge of the mound. In fact, if we back up just about three days prior to the solstice, 
you might still get a little gleam of the sun right there at the edge of the mound. Four days, you won't get that at all. And so this has the potential to be a very precise determiner of the exact date of solstice. Because as the sun was coming in, they could count how many days it came past the edge of the mound. So here's the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. And then on the 8th, you do not see the sun coming past the edge of the mound. So from that, you just take those seven days and cut them in half. So it's an odd number. So we can say maybe three days back to round it off. And that brings us to within one day of the exact solstice of date, which would have actually been the 17th. So for about three days, before the solstice and after the solstice you get that sun peeking past the edge of the mound now another interesting thing is that if you back up about 22 or 23 days let's go 23 we get the sun setting over here into the left of the mound at a declination of about 22.1 degrees, which corresponds to 1 16th of the year in intervals of days prior to the solstice. So let's bring that 23 days back to the solstice. We're going to use the 17th as our base of reference. And then we'll come forward 23 days. Again, we have the sun on the right of the mound. And then moving forward 23 days. Again, at the declination of about 22.1 degrees, we have the sun setting into the left of the mound. Now currently, the left side of the mound has a little more earth up against the curb stones. So it would be interesting to know exactly how the disk of the sun at this position intersects. But it seems that the entire width of the mound as viewed from this position spans this 1 16th interval of the year leading up to solstice and then back again from solstice. Now this 16th interval is interesting if you've seen some of the other videos on the Archaeoastronomy Database YouTube channel you'll know that the recent study of light within the passage and chamber of Newgrange corresponds in the Neolithic to a period of 16th of the year before and after solstice. That's how long light uh, shines into the chamber itself. And so that sort of 16th interval is showing up in other areas too with alignments including some very interesting alignments here at New Grange itself that I hope to be able to cover in later videos and if you've seen my video on the calendar stone at Nauth just right here nearby New Grange there's theories that connect to that regarding the 16th interval division of the year. So it's really very interesting that 
this very specific position could have been set up to span that 16th of the year division prior to and after solstice. And I think this is an area that's worth a lot of further study, which I hope to be able to cover also in future videos. So to finish, I'll just show this overlay image, which shows where the modern day sun sets and where the sun sets at the solstice in the Neolithic toward the right and also 23 days before and after the solstice corresponding to 1 16th of a year. And those dates there are the Neolithic dates for 3000 BC. For modern observations of this position because of the changes in the Earth's orbit you'd probably be aiming for June 1st or 2nd prior to the solstice and July 9th and 10th after the summer solstice because although the Earth is orbiting the Sun a little bit slower during that time of year it doesn't have to span quite as much of a range of declination as in the past when the solstice position was at 24 degrees declination and now it only needs to reach 23.4 degrees declination so it can cover that time in a little bit less than it would have in the past cover that span of declination rather so that's all for this video please um, comment and share your thoughts and questions below the video and be sure to watch the other related videos and again thank you so much for watching and for your participation with the Archaeoastronomy database please share like subscribe and if you can support on patreon or also on PayPal as this really helps us to be able to do the work of the Archaeoastronomy database and to share these things with everyone